Good morning. morning. Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. Nice, toasty, warm morning here in the church. Even better out there now is warm because the furnace got fixed. So especially on this cold day that works, especially when that door doesn't want to stay closed. Keeps the heat in. But welcome to all of you. Welcome to those joining us online or through our tablet ministry. And before we worship, we recognize that we're gathered here on the traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq people. As always, face masks are required when you're entering or exiting the building. Uh, but if you're sitting down and you feel comfortable, you may remove it. Uh, the Christian Council Carol Sing is tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock at the, uh, the Skirman Gazebo in Kensington, uh, down by the train station there. Um, 7 to 7 30 ish, depending on weather, but it's kind of sounding like it might be cold or warm. I don't know what it's supposed to be tomorrow. It's all kind of all over the place. So I guess we'll find out. Um, but come out and uh, we're going to be all joining together in a carol sing. Uh, Christmas collections are continuing. Last week we had White Gift Sunday, but that doesn't mean you can't keep bringing in things uh, for the food bank or the Tree of Hope. So please feel free to bring them in and you can place them under the tree and we'll make sure that they get to where they belong. Our Comfort and Hope service is again December 21st, the longest night. Uh, this is a blue Christmas service for those who don't feel like this Christmas season is something to be celebrating. If you don't feel that way, uh, please feel free to come out and we pray that this service would be a comfort to you during this time. We also encourage those who would like to come out and support others to please come out. As we've been saying, our Christmas Eve services, we're going to again do two this year just because of numbers. Um, so 6.30 here in Kensington or if you prefer St. John's at 7.30 and uh, the sessions just made the decision that we're going to keep masks on throughout the services just as a way of uh, making people feel more comfortable and safe uh, just because we know we'll have other people coming that don't regularly attend on Sundays with us. Uh, pastoral charge joint meeting so just a reminder to the boards and sessions that we'll be meeting next Monday here at the church at seven o'clock for our annual pastoral charge joint meeting um, as always we're also collecting the toilet paper for the gifts from the heart so please feel free to bring that in and we'll make sure that they get it I know that they greatly appreciate it and they also rely on the churches uh, the Presbyterian churches to uh, do this at least twice a year so it's greatly encouraged you can do that Last week during the service, I read the manger mission, uh, the, the wise men story, if you were here and if you didn't, you can watch it online. And uh, I encourage you to set up your nativity scene and put your wise men out and uh, take pictures and send them to me. And I thought as a way we can, as a congregations, we can kind of look at the journey of the wise men. And we can also think about, think about why the wise men are moving, what they're moving towards. Uh, obviously Christmas, we're moving towards the manger and Jesus. As a reminder so I thought well let's start our journey of our wise men so I have some pictures that people submitted this week so let's just see them so we have uh, Barry McLean sent me this he's got in the dining room window the wise men are out there waiting and he actually sent me another one last night but I'll put it in tomorrow or for next week uh, Judy Stafford sent me this one it's in the upstairs bedroom window they're looking out they're looking for that star she told me haven't seen it yet so let us begin our service as we sing our intro, Hope is a Star. You're going to migrate? All right. <laughs> and as it's the second Sunday in Advent, we'll be singing the first two verses of the song. Until the morning is bright When God is a child There's joy in our song The last shall be first And the weak shall be strong And none shall be afraid This is a ribbon that circles the earth Giving a promise of safety and worth When God is a child, there's 
has joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall be afraid. Please be seated. I'm going to invite Linda up to lead us in the lighting of the Advent candle liturgy this morning. Peace is the promise of God. Peace is found when God's order and justice are brought to the world. We wait the birth of the Prince of Peace. Yes, be safer. <laughs> Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your everlasting peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let us come together in our responsive call to worship. A voice in the wilderness cries out. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill be made low. A voice in the wilderness cries out. All people shall see the salvation of God. Lift up your hearts in expectation. We will lift up our praise to the one who is coming into the Lord once more. Amen. Let us pray. As always, I invite you to join me when the words become white on the screen. God of peace and promise, you are the giver of life, living in us through the power of your Holy Spirit. You are the voice that calls us from our wandering, setting us on a new path. You are the living water that purifies us, baptizing us for service in the world that so badly needs your love. Lord, refresh, refresh us in this time of worship and reignite our desire to serve you each and every day. Glory, honor, and praise be yours now and always. Merciful God, our baptism proclaims the washing away of our sin and the start of our new life in Christ. But we confess that we still live in sin. We sin against you and one another, in what we do and in what we fail to do. We excuse ourselves and take comfort in familiar habits and traditions. Forgive us when we mistake such comfort for the peace you offer us in Christ Jesus. Lord, prepare our hearts to embrace new ways of following you. All this we pray, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Zechariah, father of John the Baptist, proclaimed this hope. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, giving light to those in darkness, guiding our feet in the way of peace. Friends, receive God's tender mercy today. Trust that God's peace will prevail for all those who seek forgiveness in Jesus' name. Our worship song is actually a seasonal song. We're going to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
pray for understanding of our scriptures holy God through your scriptures you ever re revealed your word to your people across many generations in the fullness of time you revealed your living word in Jesus Christ and now by the power of your Holy Spirit we ask that you'd open our minds and our hearts to you so that we may find new ways to follow you faithfully in this generation amen our responsive reading today is a little bit different. We're going to be reading, instead of the Psalms, we're going to be reading from Luke. And this is the Song of Zechariah. Let us read it responsibly. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. As he spoke through the mouths of his holy prophet from of old. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant. That we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. Amen. Oh, it's always exciting when the verses go in between verses or in between sentences. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter three, verses one to six. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituria and Traconitus, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. 
Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Any volunteers for reading that in New London? <laughs> Show of hands, I need your help. Who's ready for Christmas? Nobody. Oh, Andrew is. <laughs> Who's decorated the house? Oh, there's a few more. Who's got all your Christmas shopping done? Oh, maybe one. <laughs> Who has all the gifts wrapped and ready? Well, if you don't have your shopping done, you can't have that done. <laughs> Who's got your turkey orders or ham on the list or in the freezer? Oh, there we go. A few there. Even though these activities I just listed aren't necessary for us to celebrate Christmas, for many of us, these are things that we want to do. These are the activities that help make Christmas a special time of year. There's just something warm, something inviting and cozy about, about a house that's lit up with colorful lights, especially when it gets dark so early. Equally, there's nothing better than the sweet smells of baked goods that waft throughout the home. Better still is when you get to sit and enjoy those treats. Equally, there's joy in finding gifts for loved ones and anticipating their reactions as they open their presents. And we also look forward to seeing friends and family gatherings and meet at family gatherings and meals. Many of us enjoy these traditions that come with the season, but we also know that these things just don't happen. There's often lots of preparation that comes with decorating, with gift giving, and with festive feasts. Unless you're a last minute shopper and you grab everything you need from a convenience store on your way home on Christmas Eve, or you order a Christmas dinner from a fast food joint. All things considered, I imagine most of us spend a lot of time and thought getting ready and preparing for Christmas. Speaking of preparation, those who put on elaborate Christmas light displays spend countless hours getting ready. These amazing light shows with thousands of lights, some of them synchronized to music, just don't go up in an afternoon nor do they go up without planning. Those who set up these amazing light shows can spend months figuring out the layout and what they'll need. And on top of that, they spend days or weeks setting everything up. But when the sun goes down and the lights come on during that Christmas season, the fruit of their passion and labor is seen in all its brilliant glory. All the preparations coming together to create amazing spectacles that people from all over come to see and admire. But preparation is the key to their success. Every year during the season of Advent, we read about John the Baptist, and there's a reason for this. Like clockwork, John enters our Advent busyness, and he interrupts our carefully laid out schedules and our preparations because his message demands a different kind of preparation. John doesn't call on us to prepare for gift exchanges or family Christmas meals. He doesn't call on us to prepare all our baked goods in advance or to string the lights on the tree. He doesn't look for us to clean our homes and tidy up in preparation for guests. Instead, John the baptizer calls on us to get ready for the coming of Jesus. Amazingly, the message he proclaimed over 2,000 years ago remains true for us today. Luke tells us the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the regions around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As a prophet of God, John went, John went around the countryside, calling on everyone he encountered to repent of their sins and to be baptized with cleansing waters. But why? What was the purpose of this? Luke enlightens us by telling us that this was John's God-given purpose. Luke refers to John in this way, saying, As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. 
John is this voice calling out in the wilderness. He is the one who's preparing people for the Lord's coming. John does so by calling on people to turn to God. He calls on people to repent, meaning to turn away from sin and to seek forgiveness for what they've said and what they've done. In Greek, the word used for repent literally means to change one's mind, to turn around, or to reorient oneself. Therefore, the act of repentance is to change and to actively move forward in a new way. John's calling on people to listen to his message and to respond. And in doing so, they're preparing themselves for Jesus to come into their lives. This is absolutely the point of this scriptural text. However, it's also important to make note of where John does his ministry. The wilderness. This locale makes for an interesting place to proclaim this essential message. It's not exactly the first place most people would choose to set up shop. I mean, if you hired a marketing team or a public relations firm, I can pretty much guarantee they'd steer you in a different direction if you told them you were thinking of preaching to people in the middle of nowhere. And they'd have a point. If your job is to prepare the masses, then common sense dictates that you should go to where the masses congregate. Therefore, you should go to a city or a town, a village, even a popular rest area on the side of a main trade route. These would all make sense. These locations would guarantee that you'd have an audience, but not John. Instead, we find the prophet adhering to the words of Isaiah as he ministers in the wilderness. But the wilderness is more than just a place. It's, more, it's, it's a description of a landscape. Instead, the wilderness represents something more than that. It symbolizes a place of vulnerability, a place of uncertainty. More specifically, in the Gospel of Luke, we see that the wilderness is, is describing a place of danger, a place of destruction, a place of testing, and a place of hunger. But amongst all these unknowns and the devastation, the wilderness is a place where God appears where God is present. As we see when Jesus himself arrives to be baptized. This confirms that our Lord is present even in the heart of the wilderness. In the Isaiah text, the prophet refers to Israel's long-awaited return from exile in Babylon. He speaks of a long, rough journey ahead, but he promises that God will be with them as they travel home. And in God's presence, the people of Israel will find their difficult travels less burdensome. The prophet describes it in this way, saying, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Isaiah is giving hope and he's giving comfort to the Israelites, reminding them that they're not alone in the wilderness and that God is with them every step of the way. Likewise, in using the words of Isaiah, the gospel writer reminds people that in their time of darkness and uncertainty, God is with them. Sadly, we too find ourselves living in our own wilderness. No, it might not be a desert, it might not be a barren land in the Middle East, but our world is a landscape of uncertainty, a landscape of danger and destruction, which can easily leave us feeling vulnerable or anxious or afraid. The world around us isn't always that place that we want, nor is it that haven that we sometimes make it out to be. Faced with all the troubles of the world, we don't exactly live in the Garden of Eden. Diseases, illnesses, chronic ailments are all sources of suffering. Corruption, greed, power struggles lead to the ever-increasing wealth of a few while the rest of the world finds itself at their mercy and left to struggle to get by. Corporations and governments lay waste to the planet as they strip the world of its resources, not concerning themselves with the environmental impact or the human tolls that their decisions have, instead focusing only on profits. We also hear and witness disputes and fighting among nations, ethnic groups, and religions which are taking place around the globe, fueled by greed, 
flawed ideologies, untruths, lack of education, fear, anxiety, even desperation. On top of all, we've been living through the uncertainties of this global pandemic. If the initial turmoil of the unprecedented disruption wasn't enough, there's been this roller coaster of emotions as we've ridden the ups and downs, the rising of expectations, and then the setbacks that we keep on experiencing. Through the length of this ordeal and the stress we've endured, we've grown weary. The result is some people hope for a new life after the pandemic is over, and many of whom have already tried new things or are working at something different. Others just want to return to their old lives, the way things used to be before the world came to a screeching halt. Others still just don't have the energy, or they're unable to look beyond today's struggles and today's burdens. It's no wonder we often find ourselves questioning or wondering what's next. It's no wonder that many of us look at our world and find it hard not to be pessimistic or even skeptical. It's no wonder we have trouble seeing all the good that surrounds us. Faced with all these terrible things, faced with all these hardships and uncertainties, how can we think positively? How can we imagine anything better? Like the Israelites leaving exile, there may be a glimmer of hope, yet the road ahead appears long and treacherous, if not seemingly impossible. But like the prophet Isaiah before him, John the, Baptist, John the Baptist preaches a message of comfort and a message of encouragement. He proclaims that God is coming in the form of the Messiah. He comes with the power and the willingness to clear the road ahead. Our Savior fills the valleys. He flattens the mountains and hills. He makes the crooked roads straight and the rough ways smooth. Our Lord does all these things, and John tells us all we need to do to prepare ourselves is to receive Him. And to do so, we're to turn away from sin and turn to our Lord, because He is with us, and He helps us in our times of trial, our times of need. God meets us in our place of vulnerability, our places of anxiety and fear and heartbreak and even confusion. God appears to us so that we can see the salvation of God. Advent is a time for us to prepare. Yes, it's a time to get all the Christmas decorating and gift wrapping done, but more importantly, it's a time of preparing ourselves to meet our Savior. It's a time for us to prepare ourselves to receive our Lord. Therefore, amidst all the distractions of the Christmas season, may we remember to repent to reorient ourselves to God as we seek forgiveness and as we look to Christ, who is always with us, who is helping us when we're in need. May we take this time to really prepare to receive you, Jesus, our Savior, and our Messiah. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, this can be a very busy time of year. Many of us are preparing for Christmas and the many traditions in which we enjoy, even if again this year things might be different. We look forward to this season for many reasons, but may we not forget amidst all that's going on what Christmas is all about. And as we prepare for the holiday, may we prepare also to celebrate your coming to the manger in Bethlehem and also prepare ourselves for your second coming. May we prepare our hearts and reorient ourselves to you. Savior, may we be prepared to receive you now and always. Amen. A few things to ponder this week. How can I prepare this Advent season? And in what ways do I need to reorient my life? We make our offering today as a sign of our commitment to the reign of Christ among us, trusting that our gifts will accomplish more than we might ever imagine, because God will bless them. God will bless us. Let us pray. Mighty and merciful God, we bring you our gifts, trusting your blessings will multiply their effects in our world. We ask that you'd use them and 
to prepare us so that we may go out and enter the lives of others by showing compassion and courage in the name of Christ so that the world will know his peace and they will trust his name. Amen. Let us come together in singing the hymn, All Earth is Waiting. together in our prayer for God's people in the world. I'm going to say Christ Jesus coming among us and I invite you to respond, bring us peace. Let us pray. Come Christ Jesus, enter our lives today with your blessing. We are lonely for you and the peace that you bring. Draw near to us in friendship and faithfulness so that in this, this season of celebration we may know you are near. May we be filled with gratitude, even in the face of challenges and uncertainties. Christ Jesus, coming among us. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guide. Show us the way to wisdom and gratitude in the face of conspiracy theories and distrust. We thank you for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors. We thank you for warm houses and warm smiles. But we know that there are many who are lonely. We know many who struggle to find adequate housing or who live without shelter or security. We pray that our eyes might be open to ways in which we can help. We pray for those who have lost their way in life and feel like there's no place to turn. Equip us to reach out to those who need your embrace. Christ Jesus coming among us. Come Christ Jesus and be our hope. Touch us with your healing and grace in every way that we need these gifts. We remember those we know and those known only to you who are living with loss or illness this season. For those who are anxious about their health or upcoming tests, we lift up those who face depression or discouragement, those who are worried about the ongoing impact of the pandemic, especially facing this new variant. We pray for all those who will find it hard to be married this year. Shine the light of your comforts into their lives and ours. Christ Jesus coming among us, Come, Christ Jesus, be our comfort. May all those who experience hardships know your presence. 
We pray for those out in BC who are living through the stress and uncertainties of the continuing rains and floodwaters. We lift up those in Cape Breton and Newfoundland who are cut off because of roads that are washed out. We pray for all those who've lost their homes or have been displaced. Lord, we also seek your comfort to our potato farmers and all those living under strain and uncertainty. Christ Jesus coming among us. And come Christ Jesus and ruler in our lives. Claim your rightful place in our hearts. This world is struggling for the justice and mercy that you bring. We remember before you places marked by violence and upheaval and the devastating impacts of the climate crisis. Draw near to all our leaders and citizens working for peace and justice. Encourage honorable action and cooperation in confronting global challenges and even local needs. Give hope to people under oppression and those who live with fear or hunger day by day. Hasten the day when the world's peoples will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom. Christ Jesus coming among us. Come, Christ Jesus, and hear our cries. In the silence, we lift up to you our prayers. these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn today, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Go with courage and faith, knowing that you are not alone. For you go with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.